Hello, everyone. Welcome to Therapeutic Yoga class today. Today's class, we are focusing entirely on the feet. So who this class is perfect for is obviously prevention of any sort of foot injury, plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, any sort of calf type of strain. But more importantly, we're going to be working on trying to get those ankle joints and the bottom of our foot as mobile as possible. So as we're working through that mobility, the other group of individuals that today's class is going to be excellent for is anybody that has any sort of nerve tension. Think sciatica or any sort of nerve injuries that you may have through your foot, ankle, or lower leg. So what you're going to need for class, a yoga strap when we get down to your, our mat. So just kind of have a yoga strap and put it somewhere down on the floor. You're going to need a chair or a wall for balance. Now, we're not going to be sitting in the chair today. So if you wanted to just put your yoga mat against a wall, that would be sufficient as well. But a chair uh, is nice and easy as a balance tool on your yoga mat. And then we're going to be using two Two other things today, a mobilization ball of some sort. Now, this could be something as simple as a tennis ball, or it could be a massage type of ball. I'm using a pinky ball, which is just a firm rubber ball, approximately two and a half inches in diameter. But just find something that's round that you'll be able to roll underneath your foot. If you have no sort of ball at home, you can even take some sort of water bottle or something like that, as long as it's full, not empty, uh, and you can place that on the, on the floor. And then we're going to be using our yoga block. So have all of those things in place. You can have your ball and the yoga block on the floor. Then once you have all of that, let's start with getting ourselves in a nice good Tadasana. So find yourself somewhere near your, char your chair or wall in arm's reach. Have it so that you've got your feet hip distance apart here. So that's two fists between those big toes. Once you've got that, line up the outside of your feet with the outside of your mat. Let's get some really good alignment. So take the opportunity to pick your toes up. And once you've got your toes picked up, allow yourself to shift your weight onto the balls of your toes and then feel yourself shift back into the heels. We love, love, love to keep all of our weight into our heels. And we need to learn how to use our entire foot for weight bearing and stance. So weight shift over to the balls of the toes. Can you feel the balls of the big toes and the pinkies? Then weight shifting back. Let's do that a few times. Weight shift over the balls of the toes. Weight shifting back. One more time. Weight shift over the balls of the toes. Now, this time, when you weight shift back, only weight shift back a little bit so that you keep weight into the balls of the toes, weight into the heels, then rest the toes down. The toes are not a weight bearing component of our foot when we're in standing. Those of you that have some nice good hammer toes, maybe that's because you're using your toes for weight bearing and standing. So it's really nice to lift those toes and try to learn not to put the weight into those toes. All right, we've got the foot alignment. Now let's move our way up to our knees. So take an opportunity here to tighten your knees really tight and then relax your knees and soften them so the lower leg bone is running perpendicular to the floor. Then take your hands up to your pelvis. Allow yourself to tilt your pelvis forward and then tuck your tailbone under. As you go through that tilt and that tuck, See if you can find that position where that pelvis is beautifully, comfortably level and parallel with the floor. Imagine if you had a soup bowl that you're keeping all of the fluid inside of that pelvis and you're not letting it spill out the front or spill out the back. All right, take one hand, place it onto your abdomen above your belly button. Take the other hand, place it onto your sternum, so onto your chest bone. Allow yourself in this position to take a nice deep inhale and lift only the hand that's on the chest. Now hold your breath with that rib cage lifted up and take a look down and find your toes. That lines up your rib cage on your pelvis. Then as you exhale, let the rib cage fall down and let your belly soften. So the hand that's on your belly, let it feel nice and soft now. Then take the hand that was on the belly and place it on top of the hand that's on the chest. Hold that chest down and in. So you're not pushing it back. You're pushing it downward and inward. And then begin to lengthen that neck. 
settle that chin into that throat. Oh boy, feel that nice, beautiful stretch to the front of our neck for those of us that have forward shoulder posture. All right, now that we have all of that beautiful alignment, slowly begin to take your hands away from your rib cage, but don't let your rib cage move and gently drop your hands down. Allow yourself to lightly shrug your shoulders up towards your ears, rotate your entire arm and your shoulder blades backwards, and then settle your shoulder blades back and down without moving the rib cage. Then soften the hands so that the arms are resting and the hands are in alignment with the rib cage, the pelvis, and the legs. Gaze steadily forward and then go right back to those feet, the highlight of our class today. And as you go back to your feet, I want you to take a moment in your Tadasana mountain pose, neutral alignment, to push a little bit down into the ball of your big toe. Feel as you push down into the ball of the big toe, how you feel your quadriceps, your inner thigh muscles, your pelvic floor engaging. And then relax pushing down into that big toe. And then start to push down into the ball of the pinky, the outside toe. As you do that, can you feel those outer hip muscles engaging, your gluteals engaging, even some of your hamstrings engaging? Let go of that. Push back into the ball of the big toe. Feel all of that inner thigh and everything starting to co-contract to balance you in this position. Relax through the big toe and the ball of the big toe. Finally, go back to the ball of the pinky and push out and into that ball. Feel everything engage through your pelvis and your hips. And then relax through that. All right, let's do a little tiny bit of movement here. So you're about a foot or so away from your chair. We're gonna kind of use that to start a little bit of opening through our body. So take your arms, inhale them upward to shoulder height. Then as you exhale, hinge at your hips, bend at your knees and place your hands just simply on the chair. Then take an inhale, lean forward into the chair or lean forward into the wall. And then as you exhale, just gently bend your elbows as you bring your shoulders towards the chair or your head towards the wall. Now, in this position, keep your knees nice and bent, your hips nice and hinged. And let's see if we can play through our hamstrings, gluteals, and sciatic nerve here. So can you check in? that your leg bones are running perpendicular to your floor and your arm bones are running perpendicular to the floor. Modification of hands and knees pose here, but in standing. Now let's go through that cat cow, but I specifically want you to focus on that cat cow through the lower half of your body. So can you take an inhale and sink your belly and lift your tailbone upward? Oh, what a beautiful stretch to the back of your, back of your legs. Then as you exhale, pull the abdomen up and in, tuck the tailbone under. You got it. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, sink that belly, lift that tailbone up nice and high. Feel that stretch to the sciatic nerve, hamstrings, gluteals, maybe even calf. Exhale, pull that abdomen up, tuck that tailbone under, get that beautiful stretch to the low back. One more time. Inhaling, belly down, tailbone lifts. And exhaling tucking up and under, really getting that beautiful stretch to the low back. Now, pushing into your hands, bringing you all the way back up into a standing position, and then finding your ball. Now, as you find your ball, what I want you to do is have it so that you have the ability to hold onto the wall or the chair. So we're not working on balance right now. We're working on mobilizing our plantar fascia and all of the tissues of the bottom of our foot. So where I want you to begin is I want you to begin with taking the ball and finding the ball underneath the ball of the big toe. So as you find the ball underneath the ball of the big toe, just gently let your heel drop a little bit. You'll feel the weight into the ball under the ball of the big toe. <laughs> and then slowly let your toes curl around the ball. Beautiful. Now, in that position, just Gently weight shift a little bit onto the wall ball and then weight shift off. So you're not rolling the ball. You're just putting tension into the plantar fascia, flexor hallucis longus tendon, all that fun stuff that needs mobility, weight shift off. Let's do that a couple times with breath. Take a nice deep inhale, weight shift onto the ball. And then as you exhale, weight shift off. One more time. 
Inhale, weight shift onto the ball. And then as you exhale, weight shift off the ball. Beautiful. Now relax the toes, relax the heel. Slide the ball to the midpoint of the arch. Now you've got some really interesting and fun and oftentimes dysfunctional plantar ligaments in this area. So what I want you to do as you have the ball in the center of the arch of your foot is I want you to just gently roll it around, kind of like you're doing uh, a circular motion, clockwise, counterclockwise, you pick what feels good for you. And I want you to find a tender spot. Once you find your tender spot, hold that spot, gently drop your heel down, gently curl your toes down, weight shift the weight onto the ball, and then weight shift off. You got it. Try that one more time. Weight shift the weight onto the ball, and then weight shift off. Okay, let's try that with breath. So take a nice deep inhale, weight shift onto the ball, drop that heel, drop the toes, weight shift off. One more time. Inhale, weight shift onto the ball, exhale, weight shift off. All right, one final really important position to get with this ball on the bottom of the foot, and that is the insertion of the plantar fascia onto your calcaneus or your heel bone. So when we think about the insertion of it, if you look at the bottom of your foot, it's going to be the inside component of your heel. So take the ball back to your heel bone. You'll feel if you're directly on your heel bone where it's just bone and fat pad. But what I want you to do is slowly slide the ball until you come just off the front part of that heel bone and you're closer to the inside of your foot. You'll find that magical spot where that plantar fascia attaches. Then try to drop your heel down, curl your toes down. Your toes will touch the floor likely in this position. Gently weight shift a little bit of weight into that heel. It might be tender, especially if your plantar fascia is really taut. And then weight shift off. Let's do that one more time. Weight shift on. And weight shift off. All right, two times with breath. Take an inhale, weight shift on, drop the heel, drop the toes. Weight shift off on the exhale. And one more. Inhale, weight shift on and weight shift off on the exhale. You've got it. All right, so before we leave this right foot, just increase the blood flow to the bottom of your foot. So just take the ball and rock and roll and rock and roll it back and forth. And all you're doing is increasing blood flow. As you increase blood flow and we start doing some nice good stretching, we're gonna make some big changes to these feet. Then take the ball and switch the ball to the left foot. As you switch the ball to the left foot, we're gonna do the same three points with this ball on the bottom of the foot. So the first point, find the ball underneath the ball of the big toe. Once you have the ball underneath the ball, <laughs> drop your heel down, curl your toes under. Then allow yourself to weight shift a bit of weight onto the ball and then weight shift off. How much weight you put on is completely a matter of how tender the bottom of your foot is. Weight shift onto the ball, weight shift off the ball. You got it two times with breath. Take an inhale, weight shift onto the ball, drop the heel, curl the toes, guys. Exhale, weight shift off. One more time. Inhale, weight shift on. And exhale, weight shift off. Beautiful. Now, take the ball and roll the ball to the center of your arch. Again, not just the plantar fascia there. You got lots of tendons. You got some nice, fun plantar ligaments. Once you get the ball into the arch of your foot, just do some circles with the ball and find the spot. The spot may be completely different than where the spot was on your right foot. Once you have it, drop your heel down. Curl your toes under. As you curl those toes, you'll feel it onto that ball. Then... Gently weight shift the weight onto the ball and weight shift off. Let's do that again. Weight shift onto the ball and weight shift off. Two times with breath here. Nice deep inhale, weight shift on. Exhale, weight shift off. And inhale, weight shift on. 
and exhale, weight shift off. All right, final position. Remember that you're trying to get to the inside component of the heel. So don't be just on the heel bone. That's not going to get you any mobility of your plantar fascia. Instead, feel the heel bone directly on top of the ball. Then allow yourself to roll the ball until you actually feel it roll off the bone. Then the magic spot is to let the ball be a little closer to the arch of the foot. Drop the heel, curl the toes. Toes will probably touch the floor. Then in this position, weight shift onto the ball. Boy, that feels good. <laughs> and weight shift off. Weight shift onto the ball. And weight shift off. All right, two times with breath and we're finished with this silly ball. Weight shift on the ball, drop the heel. Inhaling there. As you exhale, weight shift off the ball. And one final time, inhaling, weight shift onto the ball. And as you exhale, weight shift off the ball. Now, some really cool, interesting research about using the ball on the bottom of your foot. Obviously, we have lots of acupressure points there, so we can make a lot of positive changes in different parts of our body. But because the sciatic nerve terminally ends on the bottom of your foot, a lot of times if you work the mobility of the bottom of your foot, you can not only improve your nerve flexibility and reduce the tension in the nerve, but you can, believe it or not, actually increase or feel an increase in the flexibility of your hamstrings. So lots of reasons to use a ball onto the bottom of our foot. Okay, now grab your yoga block, place your yoga block in the center, center of your yoga mat, about a foot or so away from your chair. Once you have yourself in that position, take your hands and place it on the chair. Take your left foot, place it to the front of the yoga block. Take your back foot and push your toes up and against the yoga block. So you're in a Romberg stance, which means your feet are one in front of the other. So please, please hold on for balance. But the front foot is stopping the yoga block from moving the back foot. You're going to stretch that plantar fascia as best as it can be. So take a look at those toes of the right foot. Make sure all those toes are pressed up towards the ceiling. Now, in this position, allow yourself to bend your right knee up and over the yoga block. You'll feel the stretch. It might be in the bottom of your foot. It might be in your Achilles tendon or your calf, or it might even be in your ankle joint if your ankle is stiff. Hold yourself right here. Relax your shoulders. Lengthen your neck. Settle your chin. Find, find something to gaze at. Take a nice deep inhale into your belly. And exhaling out. One more time. Nice deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. Beautiful. Step the right foot away. Step the left foot behind the yoga block. Step the right foot in front of the yoga block. Now, once you've got the right heel blocking the block, Take the toes on the left heel and slide them down the back of the block. So all of those toes are pointed upward towards the ceiling. Once you've got yourself in that position, left knee, bend the knee up and over the block. Oh boy, am I tight on my left side. You may feel this in your calf, in your Achilles, in the inside of your foot, in your arch, in the bottom of your foot. Lots of different places to feel this. As you bend that knee forward, relax your shoulders, lengthen your neck, settle your chin, gaze steady forward. Take a nice deep inhale into your belly. Then exhaling out. Slow, deep inhale in. And exhaling out. Wonderful. Step the right foot back. Remove the block away from your foot and your mat. So just generally push the block away from the side. Now we have done a lot of amazing flexibility through the bottom of our feet. So we're going to take an opportunity now to do a little bit of strengthening through our calf muscles. So if the problem that you've got with your feet are more balance based, we're going to work on some strengthening right now. So allow yourself to place your hands gently on your chair. 
Don't allow yourself to weight shift over your chair. So your hands are only for balance. Rib cage is directly on top of that pelvis. Now, settle that tailbone down. Find a nice good pelvic position. Check in that your feet are hip distance apart. Relax your shoulder blades. Back and down. Lengthen your neck. Settle your chin. Gaze straight forward. Now, in this position, I want you to take an inhale and lift your Lift your heels as high as you can. Place the weight onto the balls of the first and the second toes. Hold it up there. Then as you exhale, slowly, slowly lower the heels down. Four more times. Take an inhale, lifting nice and high. Don't let your rib cage come forward. Don't let it go backwards. Then as you exhale, really, really, really slowly drop those heels. Inhale, lift those heels nice and high. Exhale, slowly, slowly, slowly drop those heels. Two more times. Inhaling, lift, don't lift the rib cage forward or backward, just lift the heels straight up. Exhale, slowly lower and lower and lower. Final time, inhale, lifting nice and high. Don't change your rib cage position. Then as you exhale, slowly lower, slowly lower, slowly lower. You've got it. All right, now turn your body so that the chair is on, or wall, is on the left side of you. Once you have the chair on the left side of you, we're gonna do that all over again, but with a single leg. So. Get as much support of your balance as you need, but we need to strengthen these muscles if we want to have better balance. Allow yourself to take your left foot and bend your left foot behind you. Check in if you want that the foot is straight back behind you. Once you have yourself in that position, hold onto the chair as much as you feel like you need to hold onto the chair. Then brace through your abdominals, settle that tailbone, line that rib cage up. And then take an inhale and lift up onto that first and second toe of that right foot. Here's the good part. Exhale slowly, slowly, slowly lower down. You get the idea. Four more times. Inhale, lift really, really high. Brace through those abdominals. Don't let that rib cage move. And then as you exhale, slowly lower, slowly lower, slowly lower. Three more times. Inhale, lift that heel nice and high. And then as you exhale, slowly lower, slowly lower, slowly lower. Inhaling and lift that heel nice and high. And then as you exhale, lower, lower, lower. Last time on this right leg. Inhale, lift. I hope your leg is getting tired. And then slowly lower, slowly lower, slowly lower. You've got it. All right. So you can turn yourself 180 degrees and face away, or you can just move your chair to the opposite side of your yoga mat, whichever feels better for you. Then in this position, have the chair so that you've got good support on that right side with that right hand. Left leg is the calf muscles that we're now working on strengthening. So take that right leg and bend that knee straight behind you. You've got it. Left arm doesn't have anything to do. So just let it relax down beside your body. Get that rib cage alignment over your pelvis. Brace and tighten through your abdominals. Settle your tailbone down. Here we go. Are you ready? Take that inhale. Lift nice and high on that first and second ball of that left foot. Then as you exhale, slowly lower, slowly lower, slowly lower. Inhale, lifting nice and high. Then as you exhale, slowly lower, slowly lower, slowly lower, slowly lower. Three more times, let's do it. Inhale, lifting nice and high. Exhaling slowly lower, slowly lower, slowly lower. Are your calves weak? There's your balance problem. Inhaling, lifting nice and high. Exhaling slowly lower, slowly lower, slowly lower. One more time. I promise. Take an inhale, lift nice and high. And then as you exhale, slowly, slowly, 
slowly lower. Very good. Well, of course, we have to stretch out through those calf muscles. But before we do that, let's work a little bit the muscles that are in the front of our legs, the front of our ankles. So that's your tibialis anterior. It's actually a very, very important muscle for your balance. So we're just gonna use these muscles together on both legs and strengthen them together. You can stay right where you are, hand onto the chair on the right side if you like, or you can turn and face your chair if you feel like you need additional balance. Now, as you're doing this exercise, the key to making this muscle in your foot and your ankle fire is to not let your hips thrust backward. So allow yourself to stand nice and tall, Brace through your abdominals, settle your tailbone under, get your rib cage and pelvis in alignment. All you want to do is inhale and lift the feet up without the hips falling backwards. As you lift the feet up, lower the feet down slowly. We're going to do four more times. Let's do it with breath. So take an inhale, lift those feet nice and high, toes and foot. Exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, lift those feet up. Feel your quads engage. Feel your knees tighten as you do that. Exhale, slowly lower. Just two more times. Keep your body still. Inhale, lifting those feet and toes up. Exhaling, slowly lowering. And one more time. Inhale, lifting those toes and feet up and exhaling and slowly lowering. You've got it. All right, so keep your chair where it is. Make sure that all four legs of that chair are onto your yoga mat. Have your left foot approximately a foot away from the chair. Take an inhale, lift your right leg up at the air. Then as you exhale, step the right leg back, bend the left knee until the left leg bone is perpendicular to the floor or the knee is over the center of your arch of your foot. Now take a quick look back at that right foot and turn the heel out so that it lines up with the side of your yoga mat. Gently resting your weight onto your hands onto the chair. Take a nice deep inhale here. Then on the exhale, push the right heel back, straighten through the right knee, keep the weight forward onto the left leg. Now feel that stretch into the right calf. Hold yourself here, relax your shoulders, lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Take a nice deep inhale into your belly and exhaling out. One more time, nice deep inhale into the belly and exhaling out. You've got it. Now, gently lift the right heel up, slide the foot halfway towards the left heel. So just halfway. Once you've slid the foot halfway, drop your heel back down. Take a look at that right heel. Make sure it lines up with the outside of the, of the mat. Then take a nice deep inhale here. And on the exhale with your right knee, bend the knee up and over your second, your second toe. Feel how that stretch is different. Now check in that the left leg is still in alignment, but you're shifting your weight forward, mobilizing through your right ankle, stretching through what's called your soleus muscle and your Achilles. Hold yourself right here. Take a nice deep inhale into your belly and exhaling out. One more breath, nice deep inhale in. And exhaling out. Wonderful. Gently straightening the right knee, stepping the right foot forward so that it is in alignment with your left leg. Taking an inhale here, lifting the left leg up. And then as you exhale, step the left leg back. With the left leg step back, line up the right knee with the arch of the right foot so that the leg bone is perpendicular to the floor. Then take a look back at your left heel and line it up with the outside of your yoga mat. Once you've got that, take a nice deep inhale and on the exhale, straighten that left knee, push that heel down, keep that weight shifted forward onto the right leg. Feel that stretch in that gastrocnemius is the muscle we're stretching here. Keep that knee nice and tight. Now take a nice deep inhale into the belly. 
exhaling out. One more time. Nice deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. Beautiful. Gently lifting the left heel. Now, look at the distance between your left and your right foot. Slide the left foot half the distance. Then once it's there, drop the heel down and line the heel up with the outside of your yoga mat. Right knee stays stacked over the arch on the right foot. Take an inhale here. Then on the exhale, bend that left knee up and over the second toe. Once you've got it up and over that second toe, hold that stretch, ankle joint, soleus muscle, Achilles, all of that being nicely lengthened here. Take a deep inhale into your belly and exhaling out. One more breath, nice deep inhale into the belly and exhaling out. Wonderful. Slowly straightening the left knee. Now take your right foot. Step your right foot back to match your left foot. Slowly begin to walk yourself back. Let's do one modification of downward dog here. How far can you go? Keep your feet hip distance apart to get your trunk parallel to the floor. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Keep your knees as bent as your hamstrings need you to keep them bent. Now take that tailbone and lift that tailbone up to the ceiling. Can you make sure that you can lift your toes and there's no weight into your toes? Take a nice deep inhale here. And exhaling out. One more time, nice deep inhale in. And exhaling out. And then slowly shifting your weight back forward, stepping your feet back towards that chair. One last thing to do in standing. You know we can't do a foot class without doing something for balance. So what we're going to do is my favorite balance pose, which is star pose. So here's what I would like you to do. Take your right foot and have your right foot approximately 12 inches or a foot or so away from your chair. Have it so that your right hand is gently touching the top of the right of the chair on the right hand side. Take your left hand, place it onto your pelvis for a second. Now, line up your right hip with your left shoulder to see if you can figure out how much of a side bend towards the chair do I need to do to line up my right leg with my left shoulder. You're already halfway in star pose here. As you've got yourself in this position, make sure that you can look and see that the outside of your left foot is pointed upwards towards the ceiling. Chest is nice and level and you're not rotated downward towards your chair. Take your left hand and gently raise your left hand up into the air. Now, this might be your star pose today. Really nice balancing through the right leg. Right foot's getting lots of work, but so is your right hip. You wanna make it harder. Allow yourself to lift the right hand off of the chair. Take a nice deep inhale here and exhale. One more breath. Nice deep inhale in and exhale. Place the right hand back on the chair. Lower the left hand, lower the left leg. So just do a 180 with yourself or take your chair and move it again to the opposite side of your mat. Place your left foot about a foot away from the chair. Place your left hand onto the chair. Right hand onto the pelvis. In this position, figure out how much do you need to weight shift laterally to the left to stack the right shoulder on top of the left leg. Once you have yourself there, take a quick look at your right foot and make sure that the foot is pointed, the side of the foot is pointed up towards the air. Rib cage is nice and level and you're not rotated downwards. All right, let's see if we can do star pose on this left leg. Get some nice, good balance through the foot, strength through the hip. Right arm, bring it up into the air. Stay right here if this is your star pose today. Want to make it harder? Take your left hand away from the chair. All right, take a nice deep inhale here. Exhaling out. And one more breath. Nice deep inhale in. 
And exhaling out, lower the left hand to the chair, lower the right hand, lower the right leg. You've got it, guys. Okay, so take your chair, gently move your chair off to the side. Once you have your chair off to the side, bring yourself to the lower or the back half of your yoga mat. Quickly find your Tadasana pose or what feels like a Tadasana pose for you. Allow yourself to take an inhale, lift your arms forward. As you exhale, bend your knees, hinge your hips, slowly lower your hands to the floor. Once your hands are on the floor, drop yourself down onto your right and your left knees. Now that you're on your right and your left knees, crawl and walk yourself to the top of your mat. Have it so that your wrists are underneath your shoulders, index fingers are pointed forward, thumbs are nice and wide inward, hips are stacked underneath those knees, and take a quick look back and make sure that those feet line up. All right, so for those of you that maybe doing your stretching of your calf muscles isn't uh, for you in standing, let's make sure that we do a little bit of stretching of these calf muscles in, cat, in uh, hands and knee pose. So let's do three cat cows first to open up through our spine. So take an inhale, sink the belly, lift the tailbone, squeeze those shoulder blades, lengthen the neck and look up. And then as you exhale, pull the abdomen in, tuck the tailbone under, spread the shoulder blades, chin to chest, gaze into your belly button. Inhale, sink everything down. See if you can breathe through the entire breath of the movement. And then as you exhale, exhale through the entire breath of the movement. One more time. Inhaling here, let that belly sink, let that tailbone lift. And exhaling here, exhale. Now fully, fully exhale and then slowly push yourself back into child's pose. Settle your sit bones down onto your heels, chest down onto the knees, crown of the head down to the floor. Your choice, whether you'd like to soften your elbows and rest them down to the mat or keep them straight. Wherever you are, gaze straight back between your knees and look and make sure those toes haven't fallen together. Take a nice deep inhale into your belly here. And then exhaling out. One more time, nice deep inhale in. And exhaling out. And slowly bringing yourself back up into hands and knees pose. Once you're in hands and knees pose here, take an inhale, lift the right leg straight out. Bird dog, make sure your abdominals are nice and braced. And then as you exhale, drop your toes down onto your mat. Once you've got yourself there, look back at that right foot. Make sure the heel looks like it's lining up with the outside of the mat. Check in that the left leg bone is still perpendicular to the floor. Settle your tailbone under, straighten through your right knee. Take a nice deep inhale. And as you exhale, push that heel back. Hold right here into that stretch. Take a nice deep inhale into your belly. And then exhaling out. One more time, nice deep inhale in. And exhaling out. Excellent. Now weight shift your back, your body back over wrists over uh, shoulders over the wrists in this position. Can you inhale, lift that leg back up, feel that glute strengthening brace through the abdominals. Don't arch through your back. Then as you exhale, drop your right knee in. Let's do that on the opposite side. So brace through the abdominals, take an inhale, lengthen out through the left leg. Glutes are engaged. Exhale, drop the foot down. Now make sure as you turn those toes under that the heel lines up with the outside of the mat. Right leg bone is still perpendicular to the floor here. All right, now in this position, straighten through that left knee, take a nice deep inhale, and as you exhale, push back into that heel. Plantar fascia stretch, calf stretch, ankle stretch, so much good stuff happening. Take a nice deep inhale in. And exhaling out. One more time, nice deep inhale in and exhaling out. Take an inhale, shift your weight forward, lift the left leg up, hold here, brace through the abdominals, squeeze through the glutes. Then as you exhale, drop your left knee down onto the mat. All right, slowly shift your weight to your left or your right sit bone. Find yourself in a nice, comfortable seated position and grab that yoga strap. So if stretching through your plantar fascia and your calf wasn't enough in a standing position, wasn't enough on your hands and knees, I want to show yet a third position to work through this foot and ankle. 
So take your yoga strap nice and long. Allow yourself to take your left foot and place your left foot into the inside thigh on the right leg. Take that yoga strap and bring it up and around the balls of the right foot. Now, once you have the strap around the ball of that foot, allow yourself to roll your pelvis upward. Feel that you're on your right sit bone. If you've got tremendous sciatic nerve tension or hamstring tension, take that yoga block and place it under the knee right now. Then in this position, using your arms and the strength of your arms, Take a nice deep inhale, and as you exhale, pull the balls of the toes towards you, engage through your biceps, and reach your chest forward toward toward your toes. Holding right here, lengthen through your neck, settle through your chin, relax your shoulder blades back and down. Take a nice deep inhale into your belly. Then exhaling out. One more time, nice deep inhale into the belly and exhaling out. Release your weight shift of your rib cage, release your arms, take the strap away from your right foot, lengthen the left leg out, bend the right knee in. Once you've got yourself in that position, same strap, same position, take it up and around the balls of the left foot. Now, once you've got the strap in position, arms are holding both straps. Roll the pelvis forward until you feel your sit bone on that left side touching your yoga mat. Then allow yourself to start to work and engaging into your arms. So take a nice deep inhale. On the exhale, pull the balls of the toes towards you. Bend those elbows. Hinge at that hip and keep that rib cage pulling right towards those toes. Keeping the stretch right here. Take a nice deep inhale into your belly. Exhaling out. One more time. Nice deep inhale in and exhaling out. You've got it. Beautiful. Take that strap, remove it away from the foot. You're done with the strap, so just place it down next to your yoga mat. Allow yourself to lay down through your left or your right side. Once you lay down onto your yoga mat, just gently find that neutral position of your pelvis. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Once you've done that, roll the shoulder blades back and under. Take your right knee to your chest, left foot is flat onto your yoga mat. Take a nice deep inhale here. And then on the exhale, just gently pull the right knee to your chest. Keeping that neck nice and long, that chin settled, shoulder blades back and down. Take a deep inhale into your belly. And then exhaling out. Slow, deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. Now, gently lowering the left foot down onto the floor. Once you've got it there, take that left hand to the right knee, lower the left foot, a right foot, sorry, down onto the left thigh, right hand out to the side of your body. Take a nice deep inhale here, and then on your exhale, start that spinal twist as you take that right knee towards the left. Feeling that pelvis lift, that low back lift, that rib cage lift. Right shoulder blade stays on the yoga mat. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin, and turn your gaze towards the right. Then take a nice, slow, deep inhale into wherever you feel tension right now. And then exhaling out. One more time, nice, deep inhale wherever you feel the tension. And exhaling out. Then gently bring in your head back to the center, starting at the rib cage and derotating the spine. Low back is next, pelvis is next, and hip is last. Place your right foot on the floor, slide your left leg up, bring your left knee to your chest. Once you got your left knee to your chest, nice deep inhale here. As you exhale, pull that knee nice and tight into your chest. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin, rest your shoulder blades underneath you. Take a nice deep inhale into your belly. And exhaling out. And one more time. Nice deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. Now, right leg, lower that right leg straight down onto your mat. Right hand to the left knee. Take the left foot to the right thigh. Left hand out to the side of your body. 
Take a nice deep inhale here. And then on the exhale, pull that left knee to the right, spinal twist to the left. Lifting the pelvis, the low back, the rib cage, left shoulder blade stays down. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin and turn your gaze towards that left hand. Now, wherever you feel tension, breathe into it. Take a deep inhale into your belly. And exhaling out. And one more time, nice deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. Then gently unrotating your head, starting at that left shoulder blade and derotating that rib cage first, low back and pelvis. And finally, the hip follow. Place the left foot on the floor, slide the right leg up, bring your knees to your chest one more time. Just to give a nice good opening up, maybe you do a little rock and roll through there, whatever feels comfortable for you. And then when you're ready, allow yourself to place your feet back down onto the floor. Keep those abdominals engaged, spine in a nice neutral position. Lower the heels down to the corners of the mat. Allow yourself to rest your shoulder blades underneath you, arms resting out beside you. Once you've got yourself in that position, lengthen your neck, settle your chin. And then slowly rest the tongue to the roof of the mouth and close the veils of your eyes. Working on the feet is so much fun because you can see so many positive changes throughout the entire body. So as you go through the rest of your day, maybe you feel like you're in a better mood. Maybe you have less pain in your buttocks, your legs, and your back. Maybe you have better balance. So many positive changes we make when we work on the base of our support and standing our feet. Take a nice slow inhale into your belly. And then exhaling out. One more time, nice slow deep inhale in. And exhaling out. Then start to wiggle your fingers and your toes and do circles with your wrists and your ankles. And when you're ready, allow your knees to bend and slide those feet up, bend those elbows, gently roll yourself to your left or your right side, whichever feels comfortable for you. And then just rest there for a breath or two. And then when you're ready on an exhale, <coughs> excuse me, bottom elbow, top hand, push yourself up into a seated position. Find yourself in a nice, easy pose. Hands are to our hearts and smiles are on our faces. Take a nice deep inhale into your belly. And exhaling out. Hmm. Namaste. The highest in me salutes the highest in you. Thank you for joining me today. <laughs>